Hey everyone, what's going on? Now, a lot of you guys send me images, maybe just to share what you're working on or simply to receive some feedback. So I figured why not make a video about them because I have to say, a lot of the images you guys are sending my way are so epic, they blow me away. Now, real quick, before we get started, I gotta give a huge shout out and thanks to our sponsor, Squarespace. With Squarespace, you can easily build and customize your very own professional portfolio website or storefront for your photography. It's super easy. You can do it yourself. Anyone can do it. They're super fast and simple. My guest that you're going to meet in just a second actually recommended Squarespace to me many, many, many years ago when I was kind of hunting around for a place to host my portfolio. I kind of always built my own website and, you know, I never was really that great at it and I was kind of looking for a solution that would just make it super easy and he recommended Squarespace and I've been kind of happy with them ever since. And if you head over to Squarespace.com, you can get a free trial today, create your own portfolio site, upload your beautiful images and videos, and when you're ready to launch, go to that link down in the description below to save yourself 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. All right, so on the video with me today is my great friend D. Michael from over at beyondtheroot.com. You can reach him over on Instagram and Facebook under the same name, Beyond the Root. He is a travel photographer, a photography instructor at university, just a great guy. I've worked with him for many, many years, so welcome, Darren. So Darren, how's it going, man? How's, uh, how's life in Oman? Yeah, life's doing good. We, you know, as you know, I'm a photography lecturer here at a university uh, in the Sultanate of Oman. I teach photography. Uh, we've been hit just like everybody else with the COVID 19s, the coronas, and uh, we've been kind of struggling getting back to the normal educational, you know, academic calendar. So we're, we're in a kind of a bit of a holding pattern. We're, we're doing a little bit of online teaching right now. Um, but I'm super excited to be here. Yeah, uh, a lot of you probably don't know, but just a little while ago, maybe four years ago, I used to live in the same country that uh, Mr. D. Michael lives in right now, and we used to work together at the same university teaching photography over there in the Sultanate of Oman, which is a little country in the Middle East. It's just above Yemen, right below Iran, and, and just to the, the east of uh, Saudi Arabia and kind of near Dubai. Um, it was a really great experience. I worked there for about eight years. Uh, Darren, you're still working there. How long has it been uh, that you've been working at the university there? I'm approaching 10 years, so a decade. 10 years. And I've critiqued wow. a lot of images over those 10 years. So this, this will be fun to see something different from students with a different um, cultural background. Uh, then that's different here than the Sultanate of Oman. Yeah, we did a lot of photo critique at the university. Pretty much every week we would do a photo critique class where the students would come in, they would bring their week's work uh, into it, and we would all sit down, you know, probably four of us uh, as lecturers, and we'd just sit down and have, a, you know, a fun day looking at great photos and, you know, giving feedback and helping the students kind of improve that way. And I thought it's probably, in my opinion, it's probably the most valuable way that you can improve your photography, no matter what you do, is just to get that outside opinion things that maybe you just haven't seen in your own work, you know, things that, that maybe, you know, you got caught up in the moment and you didn't really notice when you were photographing it and uh, maybe you noticed afterwards and you wanted to get somebody's second opinion. That's really where critique comes in. And also, if you, you know, I, I do food photography and we're gonna be looking at food photographs here and, and Darren, you don't do food photography so maybe you can just tell uh, people what you do and the kind of style that, that you photograph in because it's always great to get an outsider's opinion even if they don't do the genre that you do or even if they're not photographers. Yeah, I do travel photography, basically. I studied photojournalism, so I have a big background with storytelling images, multiple images, um, telling a documentary, or just even small little day in the lives. Um, but now today I'm doing travel photography. So yeah, I do not do food, but there's still uh, some important things that carry on between the different genres of photography. We look at three different things based primarily. We have the technical, the composition and the story. So those still those still apply to all images, video, uh, all art, really. All right. Well, that's a great segue into getting started with our critique. We have about I don't know one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, about eleven images uh, that we're going to critique here. So the very first image here we have is from Augustine. So here we have this 
beautiful beer shot um, from Augustine, and thank you so much for sending this in because, man, this is an amazing image. For me, I love it. I love that light coming through the bottom of that glass. I think that's just the first thing that I, just pulls my attention. And you know, like the viewer always looks at like what's the brightest spot in the photo, what's in focus, what's the biggest, you know, what's the most colorful. And really this beer just nails that for me. It's the brightest, it's the biggest, it's the most colorful. You know, it has everything going for it. Uh, it's smack dab in the middle, which is maybe, you know, not the most appealing composition, but it works for commercial, for the usage that we have here. Yeah, there's a few things. I, you know, I was saying earlier, we have technical, composition, and story. Let's start with the story, because the story works really nice. Peanuts, beer, they go together, right? So the story and the environment that's created here, uh, I think works really, really well. The composition, though, I, I like the fact that we have um, all of the, uh, the peanuts here. It makes a great little story. One small little thing, why is the bowl of the peanuts having condensation? Do peanut bowls yeah, have condensation? I, they do in this photo. Um, they do. Yeah, I can almost guarantee because I've you know done a lot of spritzing of glasses that that was spritz. You know that was Over meant spritz. for the glass, and it just hit the peanut bowl. And uh, you know that that would be my assumption. Well, well, Skyler, we have the beautiful we have the beautiful tone. So. I think uh, <laughs> it works out really, really well there. And we're going to see a oh lot of good tone in this, in uh, this uh, remaining images. So, so you're going to bring up the tone, huh? Yeah. You see, like my, I don't know if my viewers watch other people's YouTube photography channels, but if they do, then uh, shout out um, to uh, Camera Conspiracies. There. Camera Conspiracies. <laughs> One of my favorite let's channels. Go, let's go look at some other tone. These next images, uh, so uh, anyways, thank you guys, this is a beautiful image, rocking, rocking image, you nailed it really. Um, um, the next image, next couple of images are from Alexandria Mosley. So I read uh, the email that you sent me, Alexandria, and you said that you're using a Samsung smartphone to photograph these. And I think this is kind of one of the reasons why I chose it, because I thought they were so interesting uh, for phone photography. Most people ask me, oh, can I shoot that with a phone, fo you know, phone uh, camera? I don't know if I can get a very good image with a phone camera, but I think these images are you know, fantastic, and the, and the fact that you shot them with your phone you know, brings it up even more. I mean, for me, a camera is a camera, whether it's a phone or whether it's a DSLR or a mirrorless. Uh, you know, it's what you do with the light and the composition and all that other stuff that matters. It's not really the camera. However, just as a general rule, I tend not to put anything on the table that doesn't have anything to do with the story of my dish, if I'm talking about ingredients, which I'm not sure what the onions do. I don't see them in the, on the actual sandwich or incorporated in the dish at all. So I'm not sure if I would include the onions. If they're not part of the dish, I wouldn't include them on the table. Yeah, I, I agree on a lot of points here. Um, primarily, the composition works really nice. I like the mess, like you were saying. It, it works good. I like the square format, too, for some reason. I know we see a lot of food that's vertical. Um, this works really nice, the composition. Maybe it's a little top-heavy with all of the, uh, the bread and the crab kind of more in the top, and then we kind of, it kind of peters out towards the bottom. So yeah. that's something to, to keep in mind with the composition, but the story yeah. works really, 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 really well. And primarily that, that works is because of how it's been styled and also the light. And, I, and it, if, it's if natural Alexandra light, is, by the way. Yeah, yeah, if Alexandra is shooting with a phone uh, camera, I assumed right off the bat hearing that, that this is probably natural light with window. And this is an amazing example of what you can do with just the small resources that you have. Super yeah. stellar so, images. The colors work really, really good together. Good job, Alexandria. All right, so this very next image is actually one of my favorite, not just because it comes from a video that I did earlier, but it's probably one of the best examples of that kind of photograph that I've ever seen before. And this one is coming from Bogdan and Christina. Hopefully I said that right. Thank you so much for sending this in. It's a fantastic flying food shot uh, using the wire technique that I showed in the video oh, almost like a year ago or a uh, year and a half ago maybe um, on my YouTube channel. If you want to find out more about that video, go check out the link up here or down below in the description. I'll link to it. Um, but thank you guys so much for sending this in. What I 
the reason why I say this is probably my favorite example of it because I've seen a lot of these photos. You guys are awesome. You've sent me a ton of these photos from you guys trying it out for yourselves, trying out this technique. And why this is probably one of my favorite is not necessarily because it's the most technically awesome. It's because of the interaction with the, the flying food. You know, the guy here pointing at it and, you know, her touching the board just really adds the realism to that environment and that I just don't really see in a lot of, a lot of other examples, maybe even my own. The expression on your faces is fantastic. Just everything screams real about this, even though I know how it's done and pretty much everyone else knows how it's done at this point. And the, the styling of the food is fantastic too. That egg looks great, the burger looks fantastic, uh, all the props look really real. They're not kind of stagnant, which I think was one of the biggest problems with my own image is that the, the individual layers look very stagnant and they don't have that feeling of gravity that I wanted. Um, so, you know, I really like this vertical feeling of gravity and I think the fact that you're interacting with it just adds a, a whole nother layer for me. What do you, what do you, guys, what do you think, Darren? Yeah, the composition is, is really thoughtful. And what makes it all come together is the light. I'm sure this is a composite of images um, with the interaction of, of the subjects in the background and the different layers. And that's hard to nail when you're putting all this together because if you get that light a little bit off between your different composite images, it, it just falls apart because light is what is like the, the window or the, the clue in the image that, that makes a composite image fall apart. So this works out really well. Uh, the, like you said, the interaction is good. It's clean, it's smooth, it just, it just works. And this is probably, I don't know, maybe you can answer. I would imagine a hamburger is a really difficult uh, fo food subject to photograph because- oh, it's, it's tough, yeah. You have to undercook you it. Have, yeah, you have all the different um, items that need to, you know, work together and be at their peak freshness and warm and cold, and I, it's just. But it works really nice, and they they've done a pretty pretty good job of it. I don't really have too many points to make. I mean, my only complaint really with this photo would be, you know, talking about the technical aspects, would be maybe the white balance. It looks a little bit yellowish to me. Yeah, it looks a little bit off. Um, but maybe that adds to the realism, you know? Like it's not meant to be a professional, you know, in the studio commercial photograph, you know, where everything's perfect. I think the imperfections add to the realism almost. I love a good burger. Yeah, thank you so much for, uh, for sending that in. You can find them. Uh, they have more images. I looked at their Instagram. They have more awesome images on their Instagram. Check that link at, uh, you know, and thank you so much, uh, Bogdan and Christina, for sending that in. It's fantastic. Okay, so we're moving on to our last two images from Victor Chin, and these are probably my favorite ones of the group, some of my favorite ones. I really like that beer shot, but these last two are probably my favorite. And just because they're so out there, I haven't really seen a lot of images like this, and so I think they're really fantastic. So thank you, Victor, for uh, sending these over. You can follow him at his Instagram right there. Um, I love the propping. Uh, it's got kind of a woodsy feel with the pine cone and, and I think we have, what are these, coffee beans and stuff like that, so that's kind of interesting. I, I'm not sure how all of that plays together. I'm sure there is a story behind that and why there's coffee beans and this kind of drink. Just for looking at the image, you know, right off, you know, without any kind of backstory, I'm not sure about those types of props all together in one shot, but the technique of the light coming through that, that glass and uh, the way that the liquid is illuminated is fantastic. Uh, that smoke is just strange and makes me want to look at it even more. Um, so yeah, I think it's a really cool image and it's probably one of my favorite of the bunch just because of the weird factor. Yeah, I thought originally when I first saw the image, I was like, uh, I don't know about this. This is kind of over the top. We've got smoke, we've got coffee beans, we've got a margarita glass. I strangely want a margarita right now. But, so I was like, I don't know. And then I started going into the image and then we have another image from Victor. And I realized this is kind of like a funky holiday picture. Uh, you know, kind of, we've got the pine cone, we've got like holiday type elements around it. And, and it's just odd, but I think it's all odd and it's all working in a good way. So, you know, smoke will kill you, so be careful around smoke, but I know this is probably just dry eyes. But the light is definitely really good, 
And I like the idea. I like props to the idea uh, about trying something a little bit different. I can definitely see a series coming along here, which is using dry ice and food and drinks, which could be actually really interesting. Yeah, I mean, for me, I'm more fascinated by light and the technique in this image than I am about the story surrounding it. Like I said, I, there might be a beautiful backstory. You know, this might be a particular restaurant that specializes in this kind of environment. So it's like what you expect when you go to this place. You sent me like four or five images and two of them had smoke. So I pulled the other one, which I also thought was very interesting. And it's like this volcano of what looks like steak. It's a meat volcano, <laughs> a meat volcano, people. And that is awesome for me because I like meat. And, <laughs> and uh, you know, so I, I think he really kind of nailed it in this one uh, with the whole smoke thing and the weirdness thing. So, um, you know, props to that. And I, I, again, the lighting is beautiful. And, you know, it's a very simple image, but it's meant to be that way because we're staring at the subject and kind of transfixed by what we're looking at here. Yeah, but it, it but it, it it works. It's kind of just odd, and that oddness kind of continues like it was in the first image, and it continues continues with this image because what the crap am I looking at? I'm looking at a meat volcano, and this is not easy to photograph. Smoke or whatever this is, sublimation of uh, dry ice is very difficult to photograph and get it looking good. So, hey, works for me. Yeah, and cycling through both of these images, I think you got something going on here. I think I'd love to see 10 of these and just see where your mind goes as far as you know this story that you're gonna tell. Yeah, I say stick with it, exactly. Shoot a series of kind of odd with the, with the dry ice. I believe it's dry ice. Um, that would be pretty cool and maybe could be very popular on the old Instagram. Well, that's it for this video. It was a long one, but I had a lot of fun checking out all your guys' images. They just blow me away. I'm really surprised by them. Keep them coming. If you want to send some more images to me to be featured in future videos, I'll place an email down in the description below where you can send them off too. And also a huge shout out and thanks to Darren or D. Michael over at beyondtheroot.com for joining me. Really appreciate it, man. It was super awesome to, to do a video with you and I hope to do more in the future. Another huge shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Check that link down in the description below. Save yourself 10% off on a brand new portfolio website for your images. Get those images rocking and up there on the web to show off to the world. Also, just thank you for joining me. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe. Turn on notifications, pretty please turn on notifications so you can get updates to all our future content. Hit that like button and drop some comments down below. But other than that, I'll see you in the next one.